so much of the time I see paintings, you know, they come up, people come up and they do this. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. We want to connect each leaf touches another, just like this. Hi, I'm Kevin Hill. And today we're gonna do a simple little painting, maybe a tiny house in the background and just a regular road, but we're gonna change it up. We're gonna have some mailboxes in the foreground. That's not something I've done before. It should be interesting. If you're excited to see this and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for future painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, before you start clicking away from the video because of the paint canvas, don't worry about it. I just was, I was reusing um, an old practice canvas and rather than just paint it white, I thought, well, let's choose a color. I want some warmth coming through. So I painted it pink. I'm not crazy, I hope. Here we go. I've just got some yellow. This is just, uh, oh, I don't even know. It's just so quick. I wanted to quickly explain that before I lost any viewers on that pink canvas, you know. It has a tendency to do that. <laughs> oh boy. There we go. Oh, anyway, I've got my, the only thing that's really important I should probably tell you is I've got my clear gel mixed in with this light peach color just because I don't want to do my white because, you know, I cover up my pink. There. The hope is that this will just glow through the painting. That's all I want, just a little glow. I don't want much. I'm just going to use it to my advantage, kind of using maybe a little more glazing today. I don't know. It's a simple painting. Like I said, there's not a lot to it. I hope. <laughs> there's not a lot to it until we get to the, to the intricate details of the foreground and then everything may change, right? But for now, I'm just going to use that dry. This is dry. I use that dry background to my advantage. I guess I didn't mention that it was dry, but it is. Just acrylic is all it is. You want to make sure you're painting acrylic over acrylic. You, you don't want to paint acrylic over oil, if that makes sense. You can paint oil over acrylic. So definitely don't be painting acrylic over oil. Hope I said all of that correctly, but you know what I mean. There. Now I've got a little bit of a purple color mixed up. See, there it is right there. Just a little, a little bit of white, red, and then that dirty brush. So that, that purple or the purple and the yellow kind of gray each other down. So a little bit of that dirty brush left over is actually a very good thing. There you go. We'll just drift some of this right over. There is almost no paint. Like, look at this. There's nothing there. That's really nice. I'm just going to keep it like that today as much as possible. It may be easier to paint our trees and stuff. It will be easier to paint our trees, I bet. There. And that's it. Super, super easy sky today. And some of that pink kind of shows through and it's pretty. That's all it is. Most of this is trees. It's like 99% trees up here. So I don't want to spend too long on it. I tell you what, let's just transition, right? I'm going to use this brush just, just to make it quick and easy. Now I'm not going to use a one inch brush. That's just way too big. <laughs> yes. You can do whatever you need to, right? It just doesn't matter. I'm just going to mix up some more of that purple. And I'm going to grab some of my yellow and white mix. This is just good to, like I said, it kind of grays it down a little. More blue there. All I want to do is create a, that's it right there. That's pretty. Create a distant mountain. This is such a simple little mountain. It's not a big deal. We'll just do our best. Kind of throw in a little shape. Maybe it goes up. Oh, it goes way up here like this. Way up. That's nice. A little rolling hills. It's not really a mountain, is it? That's nice. Tree covered, actually. So make sure it looks like little trees. At least the suggestion of little trees. That's why I'm using this larger brush. Kind of soften that. The top of that a little more. You could use a filbert brush. It'll give you a slightly sharper effect. Okay, as you come down, lighten it. Now I'm working on some little background trees. I just took two seconds to do a quick sketch. Really, what took long was the house. By long, I mean like three seconds to two seconds. <laughs> yeah, anyway, that looks pretty good. There we go. That's really, really nice. Maybe just get I don't know, there's a little attachment there. I don't know if we're gonna keep that or not. I kinda like that, I don't know, we'll see. Who cares? House, little trees behind the house. I was about to say houses. That was literally what was coming to my mind. Houses. Nah, trees. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those days, it really is. It really is, this is a, a later evening painting for me. I usually paint in the morning. So we'll see how that goes. If, if things seem funny, that's why. Because it's the evening instead of the morning. <laughs> there. Some larger trees over here. 
tell you what, maybe some, just see how I'm going with random colors. Like there's umber, I just threw it in right there. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. As I cut through, see that? I cut through the paint and I see, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. I see little, you know, brush marks of the pink flowing through and I like that. I think that is really, really cool. So anyway, there's our basic tree line. Maybe a little darker to create some depth here at the bottom. Definitely just throwing a little black. I mean, just literally, I'm not mixing color. I'm just grabbing color. That's all. Nice. So now I'm just scrubbing in a little, little land in the background. Really super, super no big deal. <laughs> yes, that is a good way to describe it. It's a super no big deal. All right, that looks decent right there. That looks really decent. Just maybe stand back even, hold the brush a little further back so we can get a, get a little looser effect. Of course, the house is gonna come down, but we're just gonna go over right there. I'm not too worried about the house. There's not gonna be much detail. Really the reason a house is back there, is one reason. It's so that there's an excuse to have a mailbox. Otherwise, one of you guys were gonna tell me there's no house there, there needs to be a house, there's a mailbox, there's gonna be a house. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. All right, that looks good, really good. I like those brown shadows, just adding those in. Nice. All right, well, that's probably, probably took longer than I needed to. Probably could have had that in one second with a one inch brush, but oh well. Then we can work out the little details of the house. I mean, it doesn't take much. And the light source is tricky. The light source is really coming kind of through the trees. Maybe if we have to pick one, I'd say it's coming from the left, moving to the right. And so maybe give a little more highlight to this side. Not, not much, but you kind of have to pick a light source. You know, it's a painting. So maybe detail this out just, just a slightly more, not much. Well, what's going on there? That's all right, we'll blend that away. Good, just slightly more. Good, good, all right, that works. And what's nice, this is dry, so at least, well, not the green part, but the pink part is. So at least you can set your hand down there if you need to. I'm gonna just paint in this little attachment I like these little attachments. Okay. And that looks kind of funny until you shade it. Once you shade it, hopefully it looks a little less funny. There. Just kind of small details, a little tedious, but just, you know, take your time. It'll be done in a few minutes. Some of those you have to kind of hold your breath for. I don't even know, that perspective looks really weird. I'll fix it. I'll fix it, don't worry. Some of this stuff, you see, I gotta stand back, you know, easier to stand back and look at it than decide what in the world's going on. There we go, it's a little, there we go, fixed it, a little better. <laughs> Great, that's not too bad. Maybe just a tinge, where's my palette's already super dirty. Just a tinge of a highlight maybe on this metal roof. Not much, I don't want it to look crazy, but just a little tinge of a highlight. A little, little gold touches here and there. That's nice. And maybe transition. I'm just grabbing colors at this point. Who cares? Transition into something that's a little cooler, maybe. Let's see if that looks good. Oh, it does. All right. So we'll play around with this just another minute. And then we will move right along. Now I'm gonna scrub in the road down here. I'm using this color. Now, you're gonna wonder, you know, what is that color? I literally took the palette knife, I scraped up everything that I had, put it in the pile, and I added blue to it, and that was my color. Because I was, I just didn't care. You know, just any kind of a blue-gray is fine. And, and maybe we'll just grab a little red and throw red in the fork, because red's a foreground color after all. Put a little red in that foreground, <laughs> there. Now, ooh, something else I did not mention. Doing something because of the pink canvas, I grabbed a little more clear gel and I'm actually more glazing this. Now that thins this paint down. And I want to mention that, if I forget to tell you later, I'm gonna take a shop towel, I'm gonna wipe this off really good so that that thin paint doesn't become a problem when I highlight. I wanna be highlighting on what feels like a dry canvas. So that, that's the goal. But just so you know, have a little bit of that clear gel. I'm hoping to kind of make it more transparent that way. We'll see. That looks decent though, doesn't it? A little more blue, even a little more blue and white. Just change that color slightly, a little more blue and white as we work back. Oh, that's nice. 
In fact, while we're out there in the sunny area, not in the shady area, I may grab just a little bit of yellow, yellow ochre. Make more of a tan to go right into this area. Good. That looks nice. I believe that is a decent start to the road. Of course, that road, just like uh, everything else, like a lake or something else in the grass, it shrinks. So, all right, that works. Now, let me just grab my towel, blue towel, and uh, show you wiping it off so that I don't forget. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's it. See that pink come through? It's kind of what I was hoping for. It makes those little shadows. Might be too much pink, but I'd rather start with less paint. Because that clear gel, you can wipe more of it off because it's thinner. Now we've got a nice dark brown mixed up here. And we're a little blue. Actually, got some red and blue in this color as well, just to keep with the theme. All right, that looks about, that looks about right. I got too much paint in the brush to take some of that out. Now up here, I'm thinking right, well, rather than starting up here in the sky, let's start down here. I know I want this tree growing just by the side of the road, well, somewhere in this area. That's about right. So with that in mind, then I can come up here and sort of get myself that little tree established. Maybe it comes, maybe it's a crooked tree. Got a little, a little extra fork, oh, fork, I mean, not a crooked. There. That's pretty good. Sometimes I get to where I'm talking and not, or painting and not talk, so you can't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean. Do I even need to finish? <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah, I told you. I told you it was afternoon painting. There. That looks good. Nice, nice, nice. Good. Okay, I like the little bit of flare at the bottom. That's the most important tree on, on the right side. Maybe just get a few more in. The filbert brush may be not the best tool. I may change to the three-quarter brush for these skinnier ones, just so they slide in a little nicer, a little cleaner. It's kind of up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm just going to lighten that color with some ochre. Just get a few more. Now, this is up to you if you want to cross over your house or not. I haven't really decided, so I'm not going to do it yet. I may bring one just over that house. You know, I'm going to bring that one right over the house. Ah, I did it. Okay, fine. Good. It pushes it back. And I like that. It's worth it. <laughs> there. All right. Yeah, that pushes it back. It's worth It's worth doing stuff like that. Take a little bit of a risk. What does it really matter, right? It's no big deal. Just painting is just one big learning process, right? All right, a little more color. And we'll just get these in. You see, I'm not rushing the trees because a fairly simple painting, uh, your trees are going to really show up. Take an extra two seconds and make sure they don't look funny. Now we're going to create some little leaves up here at the, in the trees. I'm going to say at the top of the painting. It's really in the trees, kind of all around. Maybe put a lot of the focus at the top. That would be good. There is virtually no paint down here. This is easier than ever. Like this pink in here, that's the underpainting. That's not even, that's not even that final coat that we painted together. There, this is really simple, isn't it? So we'll just spend a few minutes doing those little comma strokes. You guys have seen this before. We've got DVDs, uh, download DVDs or just regular discs of uh, all sorts of techniques on trees, several different trees, DVDs if you need them. So definitely, definitely check out the website. It will help you quite a bit when you practice. To practice, you know, using those. This detail round is perfect. I like this little thing for these, for these leaves. They, they just tend to work. They just fall right out of the brush. That's kind of nice. I changed my color just, here, look at this. Just grabbed a little blue. Just a little blue. Just to change it up somewhat. And I'm not going to rush it. The slower you go, the smaller your leaves will be. And, you know, the, the nicer it'll look, pretty much. But so much of the time I see paintings, you know, they come up, people come up and they do this. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. We want to connect each leaf touches another, just like this. Everything's fairly soft and you usually get a better result if you hold your, hold your brush back on the handle. I really think the secret to doing stuff like this is to change the color frequently. You know, you got to have like the blues and the purples and we got some orange and green, of course. Green's nice for leaves. That's a good color, usually. But it makes all the difference, doesn't it? There. 
course, it's nice to have a limited amount of paint in the background. It makes it a little easier. But even down here where there's more paint, I'm able to kind of use the trunk colors and use the, you know, the background yellows and just letting it mix. I'm trying to get as many variations here as I possibly can. And still trying to make it look fairly soft. Just like this. This is good. This is really pretty much what we want. I don't know, maybe just a little more. I don't know if I want to go over that house with leaves. I guess I probably do. Let me do that later. Give, you know, give me just a minute to look at it and figure, figure out where exactly I want those. But anyway, I'm just playing around. Just, just playing around. These golden color leaves are kind of pretty. Maybe one of these trees is more of those golden color leaves. Maybe this little background one that I'm working on. That's nice. Gives it a little punch of color. Okay, there we go, right over the house, right there, good. All right, that's probably enough. That just sets that house right back, I like that. Oh, does that make a difference? Yes. That's nice, a couple of nice thick ones right over that dark paint, just like that. Nice, okay, refine that later if we need to, but that looks good. Let's keep moving up here, back to the upper right area, and just plunk in a few more. Maybe leave more open there. You don't want to close the whole painting. Yeah, you leave that open there. You don't want to close the whole painting off. Let's let's leave some variety in there. Good. Just a few on this tree, so it's not completely bare. But most of them will be down here. Fewer up in this sky area. Like I said, I wanted that a little more open. Now we're going to go ahead and just scrub on a little highlight here and there. This is also like the sky. I wiped it off so it's very, very dry. Just basically a stain on the canvas is all that's here. Here's my color. So it makes for very easy layering. That's the point. You want to make this as easy to layer as possible. Now back here, actually tell you what, back there we don't want, we don't want it so dull. We want it almost as bright as we can get it. How's that? Oh yeah. That's good. Tell you what, we can actually take this and wipe that in if you want to. Just depends. There. As we come forward, then, you know, it gets a little, a little darker, not a lot. You know, it goes from extreme light to, okay, now there's a highlight. Something like this, and it's just really random. I'm not trying to, to say, okay, this tree is causing you know these sets of shadows, nothing like that. Oh no, oh no. It's mostly shadows actually down here. A lot of red in this color that complements the reds that are coming through. It wasn't that nice. See, we started out reusing a canvas and ended up kind of with a new nice effect. You know, that coming through, that, that light coming through is really pretty. So anyway, there you go. Mm. Of course, we'll soften this just by rubbing it with a paper towel. But that's pretty good. Less and less light as you come down. Now, the other thing we want to do is take some blue, white, a little touch of red to make a purple. Something along those lines. And yes, right there. Just start tossing this purple in and around as kind of just another color. And then some other just grays and whatnot. We want a ton, a ton of color in this road. Here's some umber. Umber white, just something to make it not look black. Umber sometimes just shows up black. But this way you get some, oh, there it is. Some different tones happening. Well, that pretty much looks like the underpainting, but that's fine. <laughs> there. And I've quickly got these little mailboxes blocked in. Just took a couple seconds. Now we're going to highlight if I could stay inside the lines. <laughs> Stuff like this is definitely not where I where I do real well. This is, it's not, doesn't come natural. These more tight things. I like the loose stuff. I can do the loose stuff all day long. This tight stuff gives me, makes me think about it a lot more. I guess that's what I should say. So I'm just going to piddle around here for a few minutes. Not too long, but just a little bit. Just enough to try to get this mailbox looking a mailbox. There. Okay, that's nice. A little highlight, just like this. 
and then you know you can add that almost a little shadow is already built in there Maybe just a little more shadow in the front I don't know it's sort of looking a little weird and and it may look weird until I just come in and clean up around it so I'll probably do that as well you know just for, maybe forget about those posts for a minute and just make sure that I get the shape a little less wiggly. Cool. I like that. We need a little flag. And you know, we can do these details a little more later too, but how about a little, a little shadow? Oh, there it is. Mm, I like that. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So now I'm going to drop in a few flowers, just using a detail brush, you use whatever you want. Filbert brush, actually, is, is a really good one to go to. Wow, look at this messy palette. <laughs> All right, is there any, wow, I was going to get some blue, but uh, is there any blue? I don't feel like squirting any more out just for this. I'm going to get as much of that clean blue as I can. Oh, that's nice. Look at the difference. A little purple shade. That's kind of good, isn't it? And we don't want to overdo these little flowers or seed. These could be seed pods that are just colorful. It's, it doesn't really matter. They just match kind of the colors of the painting. I don't know how necessarily they read as flowers or not, but they are whatever they are. I don't, it doesn't matter. Whether the viewer wants them to be, that's what they are, because it looks like we've got some gold. I don't even know. Who cares? This is one of those, yeah, we're just going to roll with it paintings, right? And I like that. Good enough. Yeah, that's fine. Just add some color. And then if we're moving over to the left side, we can just very quickly, not gonna, not gonna go crazy in this area. I wanna keep it fairly dark, but just here and there, I would love to get, oh, it's almost too, that's almost too bright, a little darker. Oh, there it is, right there, I found it. That's what we want right there. Just a few more leaves. Oh, we've done a lot of comma strokes. Thousands of comma strokes today. Just a few more. Just a few more. Tell you what, I really enjoy those little, like, just random, look at this, little random blue ones here and there. Kind of interesting, aren't they? Do those up in, up in here as well. I don't know, you just have fun with all the colors. Use all the colors, see this? <laughs> you just close your eyes and grab a color on the palette and put it up in this tree area and it'll be just fine. We're getting close to the end here. I'm just adding on highlights, just little bits of highlights. Not, <laughs> I don't know if I can speak, hey, that's okay. That's okay, we're close to done. I don't have to be able to speak. <laughs> this is good. Just, just a little highlight. Mm. Nice, you see those just touches, quick touches. I mean, it's not, a, it's a little different of a painting because there's so many shadows happening. So it's not necessarily super important that you get this thing highlighted perfectly all the way. I think just get a little highlight here and there and be done with it. That's what I say. Looks good enough. And then on these, maybe just a little, little tinge of highlight. Then we'll get our liner brush out and we'll make everything look better. Everything always looks better with a liner brush. Okay, everything usually looks better with the liner brush. <laughs> yes. All right, now maybe over here, same idea. Just, just give it a little highlight here and there. Just the ones that kind of make sense. Just broken up, broken up highlight, not much. The worst thing you want to, you know, the worst thing you could do is overdo all this. I get it just too, too bright where you lose that effect where our, our eye is going to the middle. You know, even if you didn't highlight these, it'd probably be all right. But just a little, makes a nice statement like that. Well, now we're going to add in the final details here using a liner brush. Starting, oh, I set my palette down. I should actually pick that up because I'm going to need it. <laughs> uh, starting with the... Uh, Starting with the little limbs, get those in. Oh, those are nice. Look at the right over those bright areas. That is contrast, isn't it? It's pretty good. All right, that works. Mm. You'll notice I don't make my colors too dark so often, especially, I mean, I used to do this all the time with the liner brush. Go back and look at my, some of my older ones. I would take the, you know, take like a black and use that. Well, the black goes on so pure it doesn't mix at all and it looks darker than anything else and they just your limbs just go whoa <laughs> we don't want our limbs to go whoa we want our limbs to sort of stay in the background so if nothing else lighten them you know three or four shades lighter than you think they ought to be give that a try especially when you're working on something like this with contrast in fact there's my color it's not too runny today i should run it make it a little more <laughs> i should run it <laughs> i should make it a little more runny 
so it flows better, so I don't have to keep reloading, but I'm almost done. There, that looks good. And then of course you just do kind of random wiggly ones just to, as filler, pretty much. Just kind of using the paint that's already on the canvas just to, just to get some filler ones in there. Yeah, it's good enough. Maybe right here, get this one a little bigger. Don't go crazy. Very quickly, this can look kind of bad if you're not careful. So, just be a little bit careful. Not too careful, just, you know. <laughs> I don't even know, I'm just rambling. I should probably, probably stop rambling. There, that looks good. Hey, this is, this is it. This is the final, final bit of detail. And then what we also need to do is, let me, let me do this right now. Let me grab a little more, a little more oil, grab a little, just any random light color. I always say you don't, you don't really have to mix the paint with the liner brush. You just grab what you've got laying around. And we will add some blades of grass and also some stems and maybe some extra leaves to whatever these are. These plants here in the foreground, flowers, seed pods, whatever you wanted them to be. There, and then cover up just the base here of the mailbox. <laughs> Somebody needs to get out here and trim the grass at least in front. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and also this original painting, which will be on the website. Thanks for watching.